With the way Toy Story 3 ended, I think we all wholeheartedly felt that the Toy Story franchise had reached its natural best ending. And as one big collective, when we heard the news of a Toy Story 4 in the works, we all let out a giant sigh. Clearly, this was another cash grab from Pixar, banking on one of their most successful franchises. It happened with Cars, it's been a theme of sequels with many of their classics, and the series truly can't end as well as it first seemed with Toy Story 3. And even once the trailers came out, it looked like a fun new avenue Toy Story could explore, but in my head, I could never quite click onto how this ending was necessary, would be as satisfying as before. But once I sat down in the cinema and submitted myself to yet another iconic Toy Story movie, I slowly came to the realization, as I'm sure most people did, that this was just as good a film as all of those before it. A Toy Story 4 seemed to brew out of nowhere, but my god was it a worthy addition to the series. Right from the get-go, it was tugging at my heartstrings of nostalgia with its infamous motifs on the Disney logo, the little flashback prologue showing how previous toys had gone missing over the years, and that beautiful montage of Andy's life, playing with Woody and Buzz and Woody and Jesse, swinging around in the garden and just masterfully whipping into his final moments with Andy, and bringing us right up into those recognizable Toy Story clouds. It felt like the perfect little homage to the Toy Story films as a whole, and kick-started right into a roller coaster of emotions going forward. To give a brief non-spoilery overview of the story, Bonnie is playing with all of her new toys for the summer, and though it all seems pretty normal, it's clear she has different favourites than Andy, with Woody now being the least prioritised. At her first day at kindergarten, Bonnie makes Forky and is clearly her new favourite toy, and Woody makes it his job to keep Forky around Bonnie. Soon enough, Forky escapes on a road trip and Woody follows. They end up at a fair in a nearby antique shop where Woody tries to find Bo Peep instead, who's clearly nearby. Instead, they meet Gabby Gabby, an old-fashioned doll with a defective voice box, something Woody still has working inside of him. And with her being the antagonist, in case you couldn't tell, they run away, but Forky is taken instead. The rest of the movie includes Woody trying to save Forky and get into Bonnie, all while meeting Bo Peep and having her help in all sorts of escapades with some new faces across the park getting into all sorts of heisty hijinks. All under an astounding photorealistic visual design that is always breathtaking to take a look at. And by the end of it all, whether you're happy or sad, there will be tears. It's a modern day Pixar film after all. Without going into detail, the plot seems fairly sidelined and unconnected from the main Toy Story plotline. But in actuality, that couldn't really be any farther from the truth. The fact of the matter is, is that the original trilogy of Toy Story was all about the toys and their kids, most notably Andy, of course. But the fourth film is the first film to be centrally focused on just the toys. Toy Story 3's ending is all about the process of growing up and moving on, just as Andy had to do in his college years. But Toy Story 4 is about Woody and his natural ending point. And though Toy Story 3 does wrap up everything quite nicely, the only real missing piece is Woody, simply saying goodbye to his friend, but not so much having an integral end like the other characters do. This film is here to fill that gap. Not only is it the ending that wraps up every loose end, but it's also the loop that every narrative finale needs. This film, more than anything, takes us right back to the first film, and shows us how far the characters have come. Showing Woody's starkly different reactions to having a new toy getting the new favourite toy spot. Now I think I have the most unpopular opinion when it comes to favourite characters, but honestly, I really like the intensely scary characters of the different Bensons. I don't entirely know what it is about him, but I just find him really funny and someone I want to root for, even though it's clearly not going to work out. And even though they can't speak because they're ventriloquist dummies, only being able to voice a <laughs> They still end up having more lines than many of the side characters, and that is a common complaint I've been seeing about this movie, but honestly, I can't see it working in much of another way. Toy Story has become a progressively larger ensemble cast that must be impossible to work around, so splitting teams up and focusing less on one of the teams just seems like the only way around it. Each character gets some kind of moment, no matter how big or small, but honestly I feel it's the best that can be done considering the runtime. And though it's subtle, there's even a kind of girl power scene moment during the prologue flashback in Molly's room, as when Bo Peep is helping Woody prepare to save RC outside the window, every toy in Molly's room happens to be female, I think, yet they are just as successful as organising this little mission. It was nice to see in a way that naturally made sense since this is Molly's room, and not crammed into your face like it was some kind of quota. 
and it has more of a purpose as well, as it shows Bo Peep was always at least somewhat of a powerful, leadershipy kind of woman, though we never saw it as much in the previous films. It explains an element of her twist character traits. Did you know YouTube's changed the notification bell? Now there's a drop down menu that decides how many notifications you get from channels, and I can see what percentage of viewers are using that bell, so please click on that bell and choose all notifications, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Now I think at this point I'm gonna start talking about characters specifically, and we're gonna start treading onto late movie stuff, so this is your kind of your spoiler barrier warning. If you haven't seen the film, I highly recommend doing it now and come back to us later. Please come back. Please don't forget me. So, let's talk new characters, because I have some thoughts. There's six main new ones with Forky, Gabby Gabby, Giggle McDimples, Bunny and Ducky, and Duke Kaboom. And though I enjoy the variety and they do have all sorts of little moments, I also feel like something was a little lacking in most of them. Forky, for example, is all about trash at the start, and after a single five mile walk with Woody, is dead set on getting back to Bonnie, now realizing he's like her trash. It makes sense so as to not constantly be fighting the trash joke any further, but it still felt a little bit too much of a 180 when I first saw it. I do like how he turned into an oblivious, naive little comic relief character instead though, clinging on to Gabby Gabby and all that. He turned out alright, though he felt oddly pushed forwards by the narrative. Duke Kaboom was also a lot of fun, I loved his backstory and how it linked to him having an actual arc in the main plot as well, and I only wish his kid appeared at the fair somehow, even if he was older, just as a kind of sticking it to the man kind of thing, but that's not really an issue by any means. My real issues are Giggle McDimples and Bunny and Ducky. These two I have some qualms with. Throughout the film, I was rooting for Bunny and Ducky. They were a couple of funny dudes, the classic comedian comic relief, and they had motivation. At the start of the film, they're angry that Buzz Lightyear is taking the top spot to be with a kid. And that's all they want. A kid. It's a simple enough plot, right? Brand new toys want a kid. They end up following on the adventure because Buzz promised them a kid, even though he didn't. But fast forward to the end of the movie, and when they're all literally running towards a kid at the end of the pathway, they just kind of stop in their tracks and say, well, goodbye, Woody. What happened to all of their motivations? I get that they're there to be funny, but give them an ending too, please. Even just a simple little scene where Ducky turns to Bunny and says something like, you know, Bunny, I think I could get used to this free toy life. You know, Ducky, I think you're absolutely right. Hey, maybe it already exists in a deleted scene, but I seriously feel like it's missing in this movie. They started the film with a plot point to go on, and then by the end it just got forgotten. They get their ending of helping other toys getting their own kids in the post credit scene, but I want proper closure from them first. And then Giggle McDimples. This character seemed almost obsolete to me. She's already incredibly tiny as a toy, but she also doesn't do too much as a character. She's Bo Peep's gossip girl in between the films, she's the misinformed voice on Bo Peep's shoulder when she's mad at Woody, and she gets eaten by a cat. That's about it. There were remnants of more of a connection with Buzz Lightyear, but nothing substantial comes out of it. She's a mini plot device at most, and, and an ignorable character quota at least. Ironically, Gabby Gabby is the most fleshed out and greatest character, but I think everyone can agree on that anyway. Having the twist of the movie not be that the good guy is actually the bad guy, like every other cliche movie has done recently, is nice compared to just the nice and wholesome twist of the villain is just a misunderstood good guy all along. I mean, it's still creepy that the lesson was literally organ harvesting can be good sometimes, which I guess is technically also correct in real life, but still, Gabby Gabby's conclusion is probably the highlight of the entire film. Uh, well, it's got a pretty big rivalry considering it's going up against Woody's conclusion. When the moment clicked at the end of the film about what they were doing with Woody the first time I watched it, I thought it kind of came out of nowhere. It wasn't until I watched it the second time around that I saw that there were just hints everywhere and I just refused to believe it. Woody almost hopping into the box with Bo in the prologue, Woody being left on the stool even in the montage with Bonnie, Woody being stepped on by the dad when left on the floor, Woody not being picked up when presented alongside Forky in the RV in a single hand, Woody being told he can still learn new tricks, Woody being called lost even when surrounded by literal lost toys. It was all leading up to that cyclical ending of Bo Peep and Woody with one on each side of a barrier, making the decision of where to go next. And it truly was the only conclusion Woody could have. As Bonnie's toy, Woody has little purpose. He's not played with, he's chucked to the side, and now that Forky has finished his arc, Woody can't even have the job of making sure Forky does his. 
All that's left thematically and naturally is for Woody to be left behind. To spend the rest of his days out there in the world, seeing the sights alongside Bo Peep. And though I kinda wish we could've held that goodbye a little longer, maybe a flashback with each of the old classic characters rather than a fairly rushed group hug considering the context of running out of time, but in the end, it was the ending I didn't know we needed, the closure we unknowingly always wanted. Throughout the film, there's themes of being lost, being loved, and having a purpose, or being yourself. And Toy Story 4, I feel, wraps all of that just fantastically in yet another unmissable Toy Story movie. The Toy Story films always manage to surprise me with just how creative and imaginative the writers get with the concept of toys, and it only increases with this film too. Though some parts are getting more and more ridiculous, the amount of meddling the main group of toys do to Bonnie's family is definitely getting intense, hijacking the RV, bursting its tyres and even just outright speaking to them in such a desperate plea. My goodness, I don't think I can handle another Toy Story film, and I'm not prepared for how far the toys will have to go next time. But if a Toy Story 5 was to make an appearance, or even a Toy Story 1 reinvented with the new technology, it's adamantly clear that Pixar is still the best in the business, and whatever they create, it'll be another amazing masterpiece. Though the fact that Forky's knife wife didn't also run to the trash bin in that one post credit scene was a big missed opportunity, and I really hate that Benson's finale moment is literally being screamed at by a fully grown adult. What a, what a lovely harsh reality ending for him. Now we just have to wait for the next phase of Pixar movies now that the load of classical sequels era is done. It's onwards to the innovative and the original from here. And you may be hearing more Pixar things from me sometime in the future. For now though, I'm gonna end it off here. There was my little gush after having been completely surprised and swept away by Toy Story 4. Tell me your thoughts too, I'd love to talk about this more. But for now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.